2020 has been bad enough that Gladys and I have been thinking about the return of our Lord Jesus. Let me remind you of some scripture regarding the end times. In Matthew 24, 25, Jesus discusses prophecy concerning the end times. And I believe Matthew 24, 14 is a key verse. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached to the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. What an assignment we have. And latest figures that I've found, there's 7.7 billion people in the world. This uh, affects all 190 nations that are in our world. So that's a big assignment. Until that time, until the end comes, Matthew 28 says we are to make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them, teaching them, and Jesus will be with us until the end of that age. The burning question is we are responsible for our generation and its evangelization. We don't have to worry about next generation or the last. This is our time. And we have great opportunity to reach the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. With the means to travel, multiplicity of tools, internet, uh, television, radio, all different tools that we use today, a, mold, a, multi, a motivated global workforce, and the information we need to identify who are the most needy studies of people groups all over the world. Above all, God gave us clear directions as to what we are to do, and uh, we are, have the Holy Spirit to empower us to do that task. Will we grasp this opportunity or miss it through our indifference and disobedience? Will the church rise to the challenge or will we slide into another decline? Reading some missions materials, which I do quite a bit of, I came across 10 different issues that are really could be roadblocks to accomplishing our task, or we could use them as prayer requests. I'm going to list all 10 of them. It's, I'll try to do this quickly. Uh, so if you're writing down these and seeking really to pray, uh, you're going to have to write quickly. Number one, maintaining a clear witness to the uniqueness of Christ. We have growing religious pluralism in our country, post-modernity, even among Christians, a creeping universalism is gaining ground. Our conviction regarding the uniqueness of Jesus and his claim to be the only way to the Father are challenged from within and without the church. In a world where relativism dominates, Christians are increasingly criticized for being intolerant and for holding ex exclusive truth claims, which we do. Relativism, subjectivism, and existentialism all deny the existence and primacy of objective reality, and that is a threat to the authority of Scripture and the truth of the gospel. Clear witness to the uniqueness of Christ. Second, sustaining a centrality of the Scriptures. In today's world, many Christians and even evangelicals are becoming uncertain of the conviction or uncompromised authority and inerrancy of the Word of God. Our thoughts, values, and worldviews are often shaped more by the thinking of our culture than by the Bible. This undermines our faith, robs us of spiritual power, robs us of assurance and joy. Believers are divided by prosperity theology, compromised with the world, and gender and sexuality views. Many have lost their way. They question the authority of Scripture. Number three, the effective functioning of all local congregations. Each local church should be a community where all members participate in body life. Each member has gifts to contribute to the building up of the whole, and yet rarely do congregations function in this way. Mobilizing the laity remains a huge challenge for most churches. All kinds of ministry forms, restorative movements are being tried. We need to pray that each unique congregation 
might serve to build up believers, draw the unchurched, and glorify Christ. Even the, when the church fails in this duty, nominalism prevails, and the average believer would rather watch than get involved. Number four, leadership development is a crucial bottleneck to church growth. There's a worldwide lack of men and women who are truly called by God and deeply taught in the scriptures to lead the churches. People willing to suffer the burdens and responsibilities of leadership for the sake of the Savior who redeemed them. Leaders need to be constantly developed. Those who accurately and effectively expound the scriptures are few, especially in the rapid growing areas of our world. Number five, discipleship is often regarded as the greatest challenge of the church today. In Africa, Latin America, parts of Asia, where the church has grown remarkably fast, there are literally millions of new believers who need to learn the word and how to walk the Christian law, walk. Number six, an outward emphasis that remains focused on outreach, evangelism, mission, and community engagement is essential for healthy churches. Christians are often fearful, intimidated, or just apathetic. Both the Bible and history demonstrate clearly that a witnessing church is a growing church. I have found that true in my ministry. The Lord of the harvest promises in his, that his word will not go forth in vain. Pray that all Christians will become vibrant witnesses for the Lord Jesus. Number seven, a holistic priority that sees the church engage society at all different levels. Kingdom beings should not be locked in the four walls of a church. The gospel can change not just individuals, but entire societies as well. That's what God wants. Christ wants to change the family, education, government and law, media and communication, the arts and entertainment, business and finance. Number eight, young people in this age often drift away from the church and into passions of youth even after a Christian upbringing. The temptations of this world are more accessible than ever. And the pressures that are placed on believing young people are intense. When the church is not acting like a healthy church with people coming to Christ, with Christians vibrant and excited to serve their Savior and worship Him, well, the young people walk away. They want to see a church that's alive. Number nine, the vitality of Christian spiritual life, both privately and corporately. This is referred to often as a renewal, revival, awakening, or transformation. The emphasis is on the godly character and humble submission to the third person of the Godhead. What matters is the need for the Holy Spirit to be active in our spiritual lives every day. Number 10, the rise of the level of persecuted Christians. Christians no longer operate from a position of power and privilege like they have in the past. The world has changed and much of the world, Christians suffer some kind of persecution. Bible-believing Christians are subject to even more due to their commitment to making converts and their uh, insistence on the uniqueness of Christ. This seems to be normal for scripture. We find it in 1 Peter telling us that we will suffer for our faith. We need to pray for each other, encourage each other, and stand fast even in the face of danger. There's much to specifically pray about. And I believe this is a concern for every Christian, every church. It's a concern for every missionary, every missionary statesman that is looking over a whole people group or, or another country. It's a concern for you and for me. This is the centrality of what we are to do, our assignment on earth. And we need to pray and think about it seriously. I have one other suggestion. Get more informed about global missions. Regularly, you have seen the church printed materials, sometimes like this. I printed this off, www.missionconnection.com. And uh, we've been talking about that, trying to inform you about it. It's getting close. 
It's the 15th and 16th, Friday evening and Saturday, not this weekend, but the following weekend. You can still get online. You can still register. There'll be 100 workshops, 100 presentations from different missionary groups that you can check into. There'll be the plenary sessions where you will find special speakers from around the world and good, good worship experience. Uh, really something to help you be informed. If that doesn't help you thinking about missions, there's something broken in you because it's that good. So I would encourage you to do that and then have a, a little watch party. Uh, I don't know how much we can do with the COVID thing, but uh, Gladys and I are going to have a little watch party, two of us, but that'll be good. And all of us can do that right in our home. Let me pray. Our God, we, we do thank you for having something important to do. Our life is not just something to spend and get through and hope to have the least amount of problems. Our life is given to you as a sacrifice as soon as we trust Jesus Christ as our Savior. There's a whole world out there waiting for us, billions of people and lots of land to live in. And we need to reach our world so that every Christian, every person has an opportunity to make a right decision about Jesus Christ. We thank you for that purpose. We thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit to live within us and to empower us. And we thank you for everyone who is coming to faith in Jesus Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.